Hey everyone, it's Arn from Evident again, and in this video tutorial we are going to have some fun looking at melody in theme writing. More specifically, how to make your themes more interesting and memorable using fairly simple tips and techniques. So let's just dive right into it. When you're trying to write or improve your theme, I'd actually encourage to, in some ways, limit yourself. This might sound counterintuitive at first, but when analyzing and studying great melodies and classic themes, you quickly realize that these masterpieces are usually doing more with less. So let's talk about range. The first way of limiting yourself is to limit your range. And I'm not talking about setting a strict limit for an exact melody span to use when writing your melodies, but to simply be conscious of the vertical range your melody is moving across the area it is existing within. Because most great melodies tend to exist within about an octave to an octave and a half. Some have way less, some have a bit more, but very few are moving all over the place within, say, a three octave span. So keep this in mind when writing your melodies and try to focus down the range your melody is moving within. And this can be seen in, for example, the gladiator theme, which we can have a look at right here. You can see that this theme has an octave plus a perfect fourth range. The Hedwig's theme is existing within one octave plus a minor third. And then moving over to, say, Thomas Bergerson's Empire of Angels, you'll see that this theme is existing within one octave as well. So to summarize, try to keep in mind the range that you're using for your melodies and try to limit this area to about one to one and a half octave. Again, this is just a rule of thumb or a little guideline and not some hard rules or hard facts. Next, let's move on to something else. Just as most great melodies are not all over the place in terms of range, they also tend to work with a fairly selective amount of notes. A lot of examples have around 10 different notes in them, which is something that helps to build characteristic motifs and make the melody easily memorable to the listener. Very few like famous melodies tend to have, say, 20 or 40 notes. So while you don't need to have like a magic number to follow, plus minus 10 seems to be a good estimate or a good kind of guideline for the amount of notes that might or might not work in your melody. So to use the melodies from the last tip as an example, Gladiator here has nine notes. Harry Potter, even with its chromatic movements, has only 15, and Empire of Angels has about 10, I think. So let's move on to something else that's relevant to these things as well. So while I wouldn't call this limiting myself, I'd also recommend finding a central melodic or rhythmical motif, interval, or other characteristic elements to build a melody around. This is something that is happening in most great songs and melodies, be it in film scores or popular music. 
A recurring motif that is being developed and repeated can really reinforce the main characteristic of your melody, making it more memorable, catchy and intriguing to the listener. Listen to how the melodic structure and use of motifs in these tracks are pulled off. As you can see in here from these examples, these melodies are not just moving all over the place in random directions, but rather they are variations and repetitions and ways of playing around with one key central motif. And these motifs can be either melodic or rhythmical or a little combination of both. And this is really making it more memorable, interesting and engaging to the listener. Now, let's move on to something different. So we've been talking about limiting ourselves, but I'm going to move on to my second tip, which is zooming out and looking at the big picture of your melody. We're going to talk about the contour of the melodies here, the overall shape. So when writing a melody, zoom out and think of the contour of the theme. Bring the listener on a little musical journey and don't just go randomly all over the place. Because most great themes take you on a little journey and a little roller coaster ride, starting by introducing the melodic content, taking you on a little journey up and down, and bringing you back at the end. Let's quickly look at a few of the themes we have here and see how their contours are fairly similar and they all have very common and familiar traits. First of all, let's look at Empire of Angels. Harry Potter. As you can see in the Harry Potter example, we're starting with the simple melodic statement of the main motif. We then get a little variation of it that's taking the listener a little bit down before it's moving up towards the top point and then moving back down to ground level. Let's move on to Two Glory from Two Steps from Hell.
Here as well, you can see that the same kind of thing is happening. We're establishing the musical motif. We're taking the listener on a little journey, going even further up and then back down again. Next, I'd also encourage you to focus on making a top point, a climax in your theme. Make the listener feel like the melody is going somewhere and not just moving around aimlessly. Usually the climax will occur in the, like the latter half of the theme or the final third, but this is more of a common technique rather than a strict rule. The top point is naturally the highest pitch in the theme, building up tension in the melody before moving back down towards the end and concluding the melodic statement. So again, let's just revisit the previous melodies once more and look at the top points in themes. Let's start by looking at the Harry Potter theme. Here you can see that the top point is occurring in the final third of the theme, or the final half. And it's starting at ground level, moving down a little bit, and then reaching the climax, the top point in the theme, before it's moving back down, taking the listeners safely back home. Now, the same thing is also occurring in other songs, so let's just move on over to, to Glory again and see how this is executed in the same way. So again, you can see that the same thing is happening. So try to focus on creating a top point that you're building up towards that entire melody is just climbing towards in the first half, and then you go back down in the end. This is gonna make your themes more interesting and more powerful. So now let's move on to the third point, which is to me actually one of the most important ones. Focus on making a melody that is memorable and compelling even without a strong instrumental arrangement, a well-written harmonic background, and a good mix. Don't only try to make a theme that sounds good when it is recorded, mixed, mastered, orchestrated, and, you know, polished in every which way. Focus on something that sounds good in its most simple form. If you sing some of the most famous and biggest hit melodies and soundtracks, you'll find that they're often memorable, characteristic, and interesting on their own. They don't need a solid production or arrangement to be memorable or compelling. They tend to be strong melodies that are rather taken to the next level when applied in a well-produced arrangement, rather than a polished turd that is using the arrangement as a crutch to just sound decent. So focus on making a melody that sounds good if only sung alone, and you'll likely have a theme that sounds great in context as well. Next is to use something that I personally call the, the reverse composition check. Don't try to just write a melody with the entire orchestra and with counter melodies and harmonies in the beginning, or at least don't rely on it to make your theme sound good. Take your main melody and chords and arrange or play it simply just for piano. If it sounds good on its own in its most simplified form, it will likely sound good when orchestrated and produced well. If it doesn't, try to find what it's lacking and fix it using only the piano. Maybe your melody is too repetitive, maybe it lacks good contour, maybe the chord choices could be more interesting. These needs and problem points in your themes become extremely apparent if you strip them down to the bare essentials. Make something that sounds good when performed simply on piano, and then work your way up to a great orchestration of your theme. So before we round off this thing, let's just listen to some of the early uh, parts of these themes where the melodies are presented in its most simple form. Let's start with Harry Potter. This is a great example of a theme that is very simple. It's only melody and a 
just a couple of harmony notes, but immediately, no matter what instrument is playing it, how it's produced, you know exactly what theme it is. You're able to recreate it and sing it yourself, and it's just a very interesting and memorable theme overall. Next, let's do the same thing for Empire of Angels, which is starting with a very simple piano arrangement of the theme. Here as well we have an example of a theme that when boiled down to just the bare essentials, the melody and the chords, we still have a compelling theme that just works. So naturally when this is orchestrated perfectly and recorded and produced, it's going to sound magnificent. So focus on creating something simple that sounds good in its most naked form and then try to orchestrate it rather than making something that just is using the arrangement and the production as a crutch. To sound decent. So now let's recap. First of all, just limit yourself a little. Use a limited range and a limited amount of notes in your melodies to increase memorability. Yet don't feel like that these things are holding you back or that you need to be very strict here. Just keep it in mind and use it when writing your melodies. Then find a central motif and build around that. Zoom out and think of the contour and the top point of your melody to make it more interesting and engaging. And finally, focus on making a theme that's strong and memorable on its own and not relying on the orchestration, mix and production to work well. I hope these small tips and tricks can help you write better, more memorable and interesting themes. And let me know what you'd like to see in future videos in the comment sections below. For a deeper look at melody writing, motif development and tips for composing stronger themes, Check out my course from ID to finish recording, where I will dive much more in depth into my techniques for both composition, orchestration, recording and mixing and so on when it comes to cinematic music. For now, I hope this video has been helpful. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.